Thank you for joining us today. I am the esthetician here at the Maroon Cancer, Cancer Center in Western Florida. And I'm gonna show you some tips from head to toes before, during, and after treatment. Today, we're gonna talk about the scalp, um, the different side effects that the chemo can bring uh, to the scalp. We're also gonna, um, I'm gonna show you how to cleanse your face with oils. Sometimes when the skin is very irritated and it's very sensitive, sometimes it's better to do it to cleanse your face with the oil. So I'm gonna show you how to do it. I'm also gonna show you how to recreate eyebrows. And um, another big question that I always um, get asked is your nails, how to take care of the nails during chemo and even after that. So we're gonna talk about that. We're gonna start first with the scalp. So I'm gonna ask my beautiful model here, Angela, to remove the wig. During treatment, the scalp can get very dry. It can also get bumpy, and you can feel like little, um, little bumps. Please don't do anything to them. It's just the side effect of the chemo. You just need to hydrate the scalp. How do you do it? You can do it with oils. Something, an oil that we always have is the coconut oil. Use unrefined, use organic um, coconut oil, and you're just gonna massage the whole scalp, okay? Something else that we have here, the Maroon Cancer Center, it's the Amalaki Scalp Oil. Um, it's also organic, and it has a combination of different oils that is very calming and soothing for the scalp. That is the one that I'm gonna use today on Angela. Even if you have hair, but you just feel that it's thinning, just remember that it's very important to stimulate um, the circulation on the scalp. How do you do it? Again, by just massaging uh, different oils. You can also use a jade comb that you can buy it in Amazon or you can find it in any other places and it is very soothing um, just to use it even if you don't have hair just to go around that stimulates circulation and blood flow it feels amazing it's very soothing and relaxing you can use some pressure points up here Just go all around your head. Here is our highest point, and we get a lot of stress in this particular point. So just by massaging it, it's a little bit you know, more relaxing. You can use the oil at night um, you can use it before you are gonna wash your hair, if you have hair. You can leave it overnight, that is what I will suggest you. You can put um, a little cup, like cotton cup, on your head. And something that I always recommend is the pillowcase. It should be silk or satin. That way is more refreshing and it's not gonna irritate the scalp. I would recommend to massage for 10 to 15 minutes. Just remember to breathe as well while you are massaging your scalp. You hold it for three seconds and then you release it. You can release it through your mouth or through your nose. When you are losing your hair, uh, it is important to not cut the hair to the skin. It's better to use a machine in number one or number two. But just going too short, it can irritate the scalp. And the excess of oil, you can remove it with a towel, 
or as I said, you can just leave it, go to sleep, next day you wake up and you wash your hair. Talking about washing the hair, um, another question that I get a lot is what kind of shampoo can I use? You can use any type of shampoo, the one that you were using before, um, it's okay as long as it's not head and shoulders or something that it has a lot of irritants or a lot of chemicals, that would be a no-no. But other than that, you can continue using the same shampoo, okay? Uh, something with tea tree oil, natural, it is good. That is the tea tree oil in the shampoo. Uh, it's, it's good that you can, you can also use. Now from here, I'm gonna use another oil for the, for the face. As I said before, sometimes the skin gets very irritated. Uh, you can see a lot of dryness and even with a cleanser, it's not, and moisturizer is, it doesn't uh, hydrate you enough. So I will suggest that use, using an oil, it will also add some hydration. Different oils that you can use, calendula oil, again, the coconut oil, but the coconut oil in the face, it could be comedogenic. So if you are suffering from acne or you, before your treatment, you were suffering from acne, I will suggest you to use something like the jojoba oil that it's not comedogenic and it is the oil that is most similar to our sebum so we can use that now i'm gonna use um, just a little bit of the calendula oil you just need a little bit um, again you can use different oils and you're gonna do the same thing as if you were using a cleanser so you're gonna put it on Don't forget your neck. Always, always cleanse and hydrate your neck as well. And just always use upward movements. Ideally, you should massage your skin for one minute. Don't be afraid if you have oily skin to use more oil. People think that because you have oily skin, you can only, you are not allowed to use oils to cleanse your skin, but actually it is not true. Likes um, attract likes. So the oil will bring out the excess of oil and will balance it out. Then after you massage the skin for one minute, you're gonna take a towel and you are gonna remove the excess of oil. So I'm gonna use this one. It's gonna be cold, I'm sorry. It's okay. <laughs> and you're just gonna press it for the excess of oil. You wet the towel with cold um, water and then you put it on top of your face and then you take it and you um, wrap it around your hand, okay? How wet should the towel be? How wet? Yes. Not too, too wet. Okay. It's just, you know, you um, squeeze it and it <laughs> remove the excess of water. <laughs> and then you just go around your face like this. It's better if you use a very soft towel because it is kind of an exfoliation. And that is something that you should avoid during treatment. There is no exfoliation during treatment. There is no retin-A, retinols, no scrubs, um, no waxing, nothing that will irritate the skin or will open the skin.
and you will feel that your skin is still nice and hydrated but if you feel that you need a little bit more hydration you can use your serums and um, your regular moisturizer after the oil It will be good also to use a jade roller. Um, you can use it to, after the, you put your products, like moisturizer, serums, just for penetration. Or you just, at night, you can use it just to relax your, your face. There are different kind of rollers. The one that I have here is the pink rose. Um, it's a pink quartz and it is for self-love. Just always keep in mind that if you have your lymph nodes removed, you're not gonna go down. You're always gonna go to the back. So you start on your neck and you start to the back and to the back. It's just lightly. It's not a lot of pressure, depending on what you want. If you want lymph, um, lymphatic drainage so to remove the excess of water that you can have or the inflammation under your eyes or the darkness in your eyes you're gonna do it light if you want just like if you feel that you have a lot of tension here for example you're just gonna put a little bit more pressure but you're always gonna go back it goes always from the in to the out and back. If you don't have lymph nodes removed, you can go down um, to the lymph nodes down here that are the big ones where everything you know will drain to. We also have a big um, lymph node here in front of the ear, so to massage it a little bit and go down will help to keep all the liquid moving down. Then when you get to the eyes, you take the little part, the little side, and you're just gonna go around. If you keep it in your refrigerator and you do it in the mornings, it's super nice and it feels very calming and soothing, especially if you have bags under your eyes. Your forehead, you go up. And again, you can be sitting, you can be uh, laying, well, laying down, I wouldn't suggest to do it. It's a little bit difficult, but just sitting or standing, you can do it. And it's just five minutes in the mornings when you're applying your products. It takes five minutes, literally, not even, I would say. When you get practice, you can do it fast. And your skin looks more relaxed as well. The pink rose, as I said, is self-love. Um, the jade roller, it is more healing. And it comes in all different kinds of stones. So it really depends on the stone you believe in that you can find. Now I'm just going to remove a little bit of the oil here in the eyebrows so we can, I can show you how to recreate the eyebrows. Normally the eyebrows you will do it after you put your moisturizer and when you are ready to do um, your makeup. With oil it's going to move everything around so don't do it while you have oil in your face. That's why I'm cleaning up the, the eyebrows.
Angela still have eyebrows, but in case you don't have eyebrows, my suggestion is to look at a picture of yourself before losing your eyebrows so you know exactly where they go. Um, I'm gonna do like a shadow, little shadow with eye, with eye shadows. The eyeshadow is just to have like a like a little place to know, like a, like a guide um, to where to put our three points. So we're gonna make three points. The first point is gonna be here from your tear duct. Here is one. The second one is gonna be where the color of your eye finishes, looking straight into the mirror. It would be here and the third point will be from the corner of your nose the corner of your eye it's gonna be right here now I'm gonna do it with a pencil and the key for these is the pencil has to be very very sharp okay so every time you do the points or you're gonna make the the hair of the eyebrow the pencil has to be very sharp. So here again, this is my first point. Look at me, Angel. Here is the second point. And then from here to the corner, here is my third point. I might not have the specific color for her, um, but it will show you how to do it, okay? The secret then is to connect the three points, but you have to do it in a feathery movement. So it has to be very soft. So we go like this. And you can make it as thick or as thin as you want. It's the same thing if you are just um, filling them in. Like you do like Angela has eyebrows and I'm just filling them in. But it's very soft movements. And remember that the eyebrows are sisters. They are not twins. They are not gonna be or look exactly the same. So don't kill yourself trying to make it look exactly the same as the other one. Now on the other side, if you have a brush like this, you can go on top. Or if you don't, you can have a small toothbrush and go on top like that. Okay, the other one is gonna be here. Second point is gonna be here. Third point is gonna be right here. We're gonna do again feathery movements. And just remember that it's practice. It's all practice. And you can practice the feathery movement also in a regular paper with a regular 
pencil. Yes. No. Everything, all my services are complimentary. And we also have a program that we offer on the third Wednesday of every month. It's called Beauty in the Face of Cancer. I show um, women how to recreate eyebrows and eyelashes. I show them how to take care of their skin during treatment. Um, and I also give some tips on makeup and uh, head covering. All these tips and more, um, you can get them by coming to the Maroon Cancer, Cancer Center and schedule a facial with me. All my services are complimentary and I do personalized every facial depending on your treatment and your side effects of the treatment. Another big issue that my patients have are the nails and how to take care of their hands and feet during treatment and even after uh, one of the side effects the nails get very weak and they can break very easily sometimes unfortunately you lose the the nails and the way that you should do it is just to keep them healthy you need to hydrate them uh, from the beginning all the way. Again, how to do it? With oils, with shea butter, uh, with other creams that are hydrating. Something that you should avoid is submerging the, the hands for too long in water. Um, you should always use gloves when doing chores at home. A big no-no, it's fake nails no acrylic, no gel, no dipping, um, nothing like that because that can bring bacteria into the nail. And again, something that we don't want is to uh, open the skin and to be, you know, able the bacteria to come in. So um, the thing that we do again is hydrating, no cutting cuticles, you just push the cuticle back um, and you don't you don't cut it. Yes, you use nail polish. It helps to make them to remove the nail polish. Just use a non acetone nail polish remover or an oil um, nail polish remover. Okay, same thing that you do in your hands. You do in your feet. Just remember not to scrub your um, your feet too hard because again we don't want to open the skin. That's why my suggestion always is to do manicures and pedicures at home, not in other places where you don't know if they have the, been disinfected correctly. So um, you can always look for an oncology trained nail technician. I know they are difficult to find, especially down here in South Florida, but you will definitely find one. So next move to our hands now. As I said before, it is very important to hydrate your hands and your feet. Um, you need to maintain the bed of the nail very hydrated and healthy for the new nail to come out stronger. So um, you can put a little bit of oil. I'm using again calendula oil. You can use any oil that you want. Again, coconut oil is fine. Avocado oil, jojoba oil, shea butter, any of those would work. Just massage the nail. You can pull it back if you feel that you have a cuticle. And here again. You can also give yourself a little hand massage. It feels really nice. We keep for some reason a lot of stress down here in your palm. So you can massage it a little bit. And again, on your feet, you can do the same thing. Okay. If you can 
live with the oil in your hands, it would be good to leave it for a little bit, at least half an hour. Uh, if you need to go out or if you need to move, uh, drive or something like that, then please remove the excess of oil, okay? It is better if you use organic products. Just in average, we use between five and 15 products in our body every day. So we put a lot of chemicals in our body. I know it's very hard to change everything at once, but if you start changing one thing at a time, you will get there. Also, this is a new normal. Your skin after treatment can change. Maybe it's not the same as before. Maybe it's more sensitive. So you need to introduce new facials and new products, same as protocols, slowly, just to make sure that everything is fine with your new normal, okay? Modifications that are for life, if you have lymph nodes removed, just remember that you need to let the massage therapist, the skincare therapist know about those changes that are for life. And just please use sunscreen. It is the best anti-aging product and sometimes the chemotherapy can also give more sensitive to the sun. Please use SPF 13 or above. Remember to come and see me. These facials are not only for rejuvenating the skin, it's for the health of your skin, it's for the health of your soul, just to relax and to calm for 45 minutes. Thank you, and I will see you soon in my treatment room.